Now I'm going to measure the temperature and you'll notice it's coming out of the ducting at about 140 degrees. That is much, much better. So now that it's coming out of the air ducting at 140 degrees, I'm going to take one last look at the entire room. Electronics, they're OK. All the pictures have been removed. The drapes have been isolated. Everything's been put towards the center of the room. What I'm going to do before it gets too hot is I am going to dust all of the corners, OK, with either Ecovia, WD, or with alpine dust or with diatomaceous earth. And I'm going to use the Exacticide machine. This is the Exacticide dusting pistol. Now, this is kind of like a machine gun that is meant to hold various forms of pesticide in dust form inside of this little tub. Now, you can use this machine with all kinds of dust um, pesticides for all kinds of different treatments, whether it's German cockroach jobs, whether it's bed bug jobs, whether it's ant jobs, and it can hold different types of pesticides. It can hold diatomaceous earth, it can hold ecovia, it can hold uh, alpine dust. For the purposes of this um, demonstration, we just have diatomaceous earth, which does not require the use of gloves. I'm sorry, we actually have uh, talcum powder in here for the purposes of the demonstration. But you can use diatomaceous earth, which doesn't require the use of uh, gloves. You can use Ecovia if you want to use the strongest stuff possible, because maybe you're in a residential area with heavy bed bugs, you can use alpine dust. Whatever you choose to use, we um, operate uh, under your discretion as a field rep or um, as a technician. But anyway, the way you dust is really simple. Make sure the battery is charged. If the battery is not charged, use the charging mechanism that is inside of the device um, before you leave. It only takes about 15 minutes to charge. Now, um, you have to remember that on this machine, there's a nozzle that goes from low to high and off. If you're ever in a carpet situation, I recommend that you have it on high. Carpets have a lot more little cracks and crevices in between the fibers underneath the baseboards that bed bugs can crawl out of. On wood floors and on other less porous surfaces where you're just trying to get underneath the, um, the baseboard, you can have it on low. But anyway, if we're a carpet or whatever kind of flooring material, you're going to take this nozzle and you're going to stick it right up against the um, right up against the, the edge, and then you're just going to press it, and you're going to dust. Now, they say if you can actually see the dust, you've put down slightly a little bit too much. Um, some dust require, if you're going to be operating inside, that you use a mask and PPE. Other dust do not, so be familiar with the label. But either way, you want to make sure that the dust is along a baseboard. Also, any crack and crevice of any electrical outlet or cable outlet or internet outlet is a suspect area where bed bugs can crawl and hide during the day. So you're going to have to use a screwdriver and make sure that you remove the faceplate of the electrical outlet and dust inside as well. So once again, you'll take the exact aside. In this case, it's just talcum powder. But in the case of treatment, you'd use diatomaceous earth or alpine dust, and you would come out and make sure that you put all of the dust in that you can before you start seeing it. Then you will quickly cover the outlet back up and resume prepping the area for treatment. Now, this room is full of a bunch of wood floors. So the heat treatment's going to be very effective. And these wood floors have very few cracks and crevices, so I'm not worried about bed bugs hiding there. I will quickly go through and dust everything I can, all the window sills, all the door jams, and anywhere where bed bugs could try and escape the room so that if they do escape, they get some of this dust on them and they die that way. But the process should only take about five to 10 minutes. And when I'm done with my exact side machine, I remove the nozzle, I stick it back inside of its casing, Make sure that the electrical equipment and the charging equipment 
is properly put in the case as well. And then I take this back to the service vehicle, ready for its use on the next job. Now that the room has been properly prepped and has been properly dusted, it's time to turn on the fans and actually begin our heat treatment. So as I said before, you're first going to turn on the propane tanks, then you're going to turn on the gas slightly here, then you're going to turn on... Let's give it a little bit more gas. You hear the spark. Now the temperature's spiking, so we know that it's working. Before, when we tested it out, we realized that we had to be at a pretty high temperature because we were losing almost 40 degrees in there. So let's go back up to that 195, 200 that we needed to be at. Okay, there it is. Let's dial it back a little bit. There it is at consistently at about 204. So we're gonna stick this back down and go in the room and double check. As you can see here, this moving blanket is getting pushed out by the amount of air going in. That's not bad. That's really good. It means the system is functioning healthily, so it's okay to let this flap in the wind a little bit. Let's go inside. I'm going to do one last check of the temperature on this duct. It's at 140 degrees, which is uh, about where I want it. So I'm going to now go around and turn on the fans. Once I have all of the fans running, I'm quickly going to check the temperature of different parts of the room to try and see where the coldest area is in the room. It's not until the coldest area in the room is at 120 degrees that I know the room has reached lethal temperature. Okay, now that the system is ready and it's functioning and it's running, I'm going to go inside of the treatment area every 15 minutes and I'm going to check the temperature of most of the cracks and the crevices in the room that I have access to with my infrared heat measurement tool, okay? Now, the reason why I have to check every crack and crevice and I have to move things around and check inside of drawers and check um, underneath mattresses is because heat travels different speeds and different ways into different parts of the room. And it's not until the coolest part of the room is over 120 degrees that I've reached lethal heat. And you need to be at 120 degrees for four hours, 130 degrees for three hours, or 140 degrees for two hours in order for the uh, heat treatment to work. So once again, four times an hour, every 15 minutes, I'm going to go inside and check the measure and measure the temperature of all of the objects in the room that I can. You don't have to spend a lot of time in there. Stay hydrated, bring tons of water. We give you lots of water in the office. You don't get dehydrated on this job. But every 15 minutes, go in there and try and measure these spots. This is really important because you also want to make sure that some things do not get too hot, okay? If some devices get too hot, they will melt. You can see these lampshades from a hotel that we unfortunately melted because they were in one of the hottest parts of the room. They got too hot, um, so much so that it caused damage. You don't want to delaminate some furnitures and you want to make sure that some plastics are not harmed. Okay, so once again, every 15 minutes, go check the temperature. Okay, time to shut it off. You'll notice that I just moved this from fire, not to off, but down to fan. And I'm gonna let it go for about 30 seconds to a minute that way. Really quickly, while it's on fan, I'm going to disconnect 
the ducting from the front of the heater. And I'm going to point the heater in a different direction. Now the reason I do this is because the heat inside of the room is going to continue heating the room and continue treating the room. And I don't want to blow a bunch of cool air into the room to suddenly drop the temperature. Does that make sense? Awesome. Now I'm going to grab the ducting and temporary, temporarily seal off the room. Now let's turn off the machine for real. Okay. Just in summary, when it's running, it's on fire. When it's off, it's not working. When it's on fan, just the termite is termite, turbine is blowing. When you're going to quit a propane job and you've reached lethal temperature for as long as you um, needed to, uh, you want to keep the room as hot as possible for as long as possible afterwards while still properly cooling the system. So you really quickly turn it down from fire, down to fan, point the turbine in a different direction, point the Titan system in a different direction, and then take out the ducting from the room. As you can hear, the fans are still circulating that latent heat around that room, and it is still heat treating, even though the machine isn't working. Now, let's go collect the fans. Before you start collecting anything, fans included, from a room that has been heat treated, you need to make sure that you have the pr proper protective equipment, such as these heat resistant work gloves. Even the air movers at 140 degrees get really, really hot and metal clips or pieces of metal in furniture or toys inside of the room can be very hot as well. So don't go into a heat treated area without some good gloves. As a side note concerning these air movers, you'll notice it has a three-way switch. The first switch up turns it on half strength, blowing at about half strength. Whereas if you press the button down, it blows full strength. You can use either setting depending on how much air you want to move in a certain area. Once again, that's up to your judgment. Generally, I like having the air moving as quickly as possible. Fortunately, takedown is very, very simple. Just grab the air movers, get all of your clips, replace whatever you can, but the truth is it's really hot in here right now and the objects just need to be left to continue cooking so that the customer can clean up afterwards. It's not our duty to make sure that the room gets put together the way we found it. It's our duty to make sure that the extermination is successful. So let's round up these um, air movers. It's really hot in here. 142 degrees is quite unbearable after a while. And let's just make sure we get the stuff out of the room and the room sealed off so we can go home. So now that we're going to um, collect up the fans. We're going to break down this equipment, pack it up, and put it back into the trailer just as we found it. Everything secure, everything in its place, everything organized. If you have any questions, do not feel foolish. Call Craig or I, and we look forward to hearing how your first heat treatment went.